we'll now come to the concept of a class. A class is a collection of attributes which are the data members and behavior which are called methods in Java. Let's take an example of a rectangle class. Its data members are the width of the rectangle and the height of the rectangle. I'm just going to keep it really, really simple. We can add center coordinates, color, etc. But just width and height is fine. Because from width and height, you can compute the area of the rectangle, the perimeter of the rectangle, the the diagonal you can check if the rectangle is a square you can check if the rectangle is exactly the same as another rectangle you can increase or amplify it by a floating factor and so on and so forth the list can go on and on and on so we're going to create our first proper Java project now. We go to File, New, Java Project, call this Rectangle Project. We'll call this 01 Rectangle Project or uh, Java Tutes Rectangle Project. So okay, what I'll do is I'll prefix all my projects with Java Tutes for the series for this series of videos and finish. You can easily rename projects by right clicking on projects, refactor and rename. So here I can change that to Java Tutes Hello World Project. There's another way in which you can do that by adding it to a workspace, but I'll, uh, I'll explain that later. Again, we go to the source folder, we create a new package, we call this um, We'll call this model. I'll explain what model means maybe in the 10th or the 12th video if we reach that stage. But we'll create a model and we'll create a new package which is clients. As I said, we can have multiple clients. In the model package, we'll create a class for our beloved rectangle. Please note that I did not select public static void main because this is not an executable class. The data members are width and height. And I'll just add one method to this, which is int area, which returns the value width multiplied by height. And that's all. I'll now create two clients that use this rectangle class. I'll create client one, which contains public static void main. And I'll create client two. Again, which create contains public static one. Client one has a rectangle object R. Now here the concept of package in fact comes into existence and maybe I've jumped ahead of my time. No I haven't actually. So what we have done is we've declared an object. So in this case R is an instance of a class which is rectangle. So you can think of an object as a physical instance of a concept which is the class. Another example is that Homer Simpson, our much loved character, is an instance of human being class. So human being is a concept, it's a set, it's a group or it's a common group and each person in that set 
is an instance of that group. So similarly here, R is an object of rectangle. You can see Eclipse has started complaining. It says rectangle cannot be resolved to a type. So the problem is that Java, because client one is inside client's package, while rectangle is under model's package, clients, client one cannot access rectangle because it's in another package. So we triple click and import rectangle from the model package, not java.awt, but rectangle from model package. You can see a statement has been added, import model.rectangle, that's fine. If you, if you try and display the area of this rectangle, it complains that it cannot see it and suggests that you change the visibility of area to public. Okay, we'll do that. And what we had earlier, which was int area, has now been changed to public int area. There's still an error, which is initialize variable. It says the variable r may not have been initialized. You initialize the variable, it's null right now. Okay? We try to run it, but when we run it, it gives us an exception, which is a null pointer exception. The problem is that I have declared the object but not created it. That's where constructors come into picture. Constructors allocate memory and they give initial values to the data members when you create an object. That's done by using the keyword new followed by the class name and any parameters that you may have, I'll explain that later, inside the round bracket. But okay, we can say rectangle, r is new rectangle, and display r.area. In the console, it says zero, fine. Let's try to display the width and height of r. Just like it complained in area, it's gonna say that change width to public, and change height to public. It also says create getters and setters, which I'll come to in two minutes. We run this, and you can see that all three values are zero. So that's what the default constructor did. It's a big pain if you have to set all the values one by one for each object you create. So this is just one object, but I might have thousands of objects for which I have to repeat this code thousands of times. Instead of that, you can have parameterized constructors. So I can say, I want to create a rectangle of 6 by 8. Eclipse suggests that you create a rectangle with two integer parameters. There you go. It has i and j, but try to use something like width and height which is the same name as the name of the data member. Now what I want to do is, when the user supplies me with a value for width, the data member width should become the parameter width. So width should become width. But this is freaky because I don't know which width becomes which width. So to distinguish between data members and parameters, we use a this dot operator. This refers to the object on which a method is called. In this case, you are calling the constructor in the context of object r, which means r dot width becomes width, which is this parameter. Similarly, this dot height becomes height. Okay, errors have disappeared, and when we run this, area is 48, width is 6, height is 8. Excellent. The problem with this approach is that the user at any stage, oh, by the way, one more thing I forgot, sorry. You can have multiple constructors. I can have a constructor when nothing is passed, initializes both of them to one. 
I can have a constructor where if only one value is passed, initializes both the sides to that value. So now I can say create a rectangle with sides 8 and area is 64, width is 8, height is 8 because I'm passing a single integer. So the constructor that's called is this one. I can also create a object without any values, in which case the area is 1, the width and height are 1 as well, because I did not pass any parameters. So the first default constructor, a constructor which does not have any parameters is called a default constructor. 